couple of deer roasts left. We're gonna do those. And if you watch the venison video, we're gonna do something new with these crock pot venison part two. So stay, uh, if you hit subscribe and you get the bell notification, you're gonna see when this video gets posted. All right, so what I was gonna do was a uh, different kind of, you know, deer preparation for our roast here than we did in our last video. But that video got a lot of views and I got some comments of people that, you know, the one guy made it and he liked it. So we're just gonna keep this one traditional that way in case you missed it. So over here, here comes him in here. Uh, we just got our roast now. These are all our deer roasts we cut out from our deer. If you dethaw these roasts, uh, just rinse them off because you know, and then you want to cut out the extra sinew and whatnot and fats. And then down here, we got onions that we grew in the garden this year and then in the field and potatoes as well. And then we have some cabbage and that we picked yesterday, but under that, we got some carrots here. I'll show you the carrots down there. So basically what we're gonna do is a uh, traditional deer roast. It's real easy. I try to make all my recipes so simple that anybody can really do them. Guys, girls, people without cooking experience, younger people. We're gonna throw the roast into the pot, put all the stuff together, salt, pepper, real light salt. We don't like salt here. It's not that good for you. It's more of a pervert preservative, but it does help tenderize the meat a little bit. But if you're using a, how do I say this? Like, we're gonna use like a beef broth in here if we have it. If we're using that or bullion cube, they already have sodium salt in it. So that stuff ain't good for your heart and that. We're gonna just not extra salt it if there's salt in the in the broth. So yeah, join us and uh, we'll cook this deer roast up and I'll show you guys how easy these deer roast are. Okay, so the beef broth that we chose was Swan Swanson's. I always try to get the unsalted because even the unsalted still has 75 milligrams of sodium, but that's just enough to tenderize your meat. Now we got a few big roasts, so we're probably gonna end up putting this whole thing in here. Let's see how many cups are in here. Four cups of broth. That's a little heavy in the broth, but we might add a cup or two of water to offset it. But if you like it real beefy tasting, this works. It takes the gamey taste out of the uh, out of the out of the deer meat too. So first, we're gonna just pour that in. That way it don't burn the bottom. Like I said, that's a pretty fair amount, so I don't think we're gonna use the whole thing. Use a little better than half, actually, for roast that big. Now you could just throw the roast in next, but our next step, we're gonna actually sear this roast and throw it in. So I'm gonna jump ahead before I do that. I got a guy coming to look at a cold mulcher and a plow. We're gonna throw these onions, prep the onions and throw the potatoes, wash them up, throw them in, get all our veggies in. And, uh, but you always put your meat in. First. You guys don't have one of these camp stoves. They kick butt, leaves the mess outside, gives you a good taste. We're gonna preheat this. All we're gonna use to sear our meat. Let's get her lit. That ain't working too good. There we go. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just use a little bit of butter, a little of olive oil, we'll pepper it. Maybe you add a little salt, probably not. Maybe some garlic salt or something. Sear it, sear all the sides of the meat. Not You don't want to cook it though. Then we're gonna throw it back in the crock pot. Oil, extra virgin oil, oil, that's what you want to use. This ain't critical. You just want to put a little bit in there like that. And this is the same way that some of the good restaurants cook fine steaks, believe it or not, to keep it simple. Just throw this butter in there. It's raining, that's why it's popping. Getting a little bit of rain. Yeah. yeah, if you want to fry a good steak, this is how you do it, please. All we're going to do is take that meat, pepper it, got some McCormick's pepper, and just sear it. Like this. You want the heat way up. It's actually not hot enough. Just like that. See that little bit of brown? That's all you want. You don't want to cook it. Yeah, if that heat was up high, it would have been perfect. Just would have seared it like that and cooked a little bit. Take them off and throw them in the crock pot. It smells real good. It smells like beer out here right now. Seared. That's all. Try to get them kind of like that. So that's cooking in a little too much. But the bigger roast, it'll be perfect. Just take them off, throw them on a little paper plate. Yeah, 
and you want to get these chunks right to the, the pot that's got the cold broth in it. That way it stops the cooking. Oh, forgot to pepper it out there. We even had our pepper. So just pepper it in here. These deer roasts, you can't screw them up if you cook them like this. Just pepper them up a little. Okay, we're gonna use everything that we got in the woods and everywhere with this deer roast. <clears throat> we grew everything, we hunted this. Even our rosemary outside, we're gonna put some rosemary in here. Any herbs that you grew, throw them in. A little extra pepper in there. These bigger roasts now should be hotter. Oil. And that's it let's go to our next when you step get these little carrots from the garden and you want to get them clean you can't really use a peeler on something that thin but you don't want to waste your carrots we we'll use this little potato scrubber see how happy he is to scrub potatoes he's also happy to scrub carrots so i'll show you how clean i can get them with this use a little don't have this use a sponge and you can see right there how clean them carrots got Carrots all cleaned and prepped, so we're just gonna dump those in. We have to go get more in the garden. Now it's on to the potatoes. potatoes. are all clean and we cubed them. If you like bigger chunks, just leave them bigger like me. If you like smaller ones, leave them like that. Just dump those in the roast. Now we're on to the Put onions. all our onions in. Again, these were all picked from the field, everything we're doing. Onions all prepped, so what we'll do is we'll quarter some of these, slice a couple, but I like to leave some of them, just throw them in whole, whole ones in now. A couple more. Cut the rest. Some fresh garlic. Some fresh rosemary we grew. Some curly parsley. And here's our garlic. We'll leave most of it whole and cut up a couple cloves and throw her in. Now our garlic. And some of our parsley. And my favorite rosemary. cup of water to all this. I normally don't add water, but that beef broth on beef is pretty beefy. Originally, we're gonna add a little more salt, but I think it's good for all the beef broth that we use with 75 milligrams. We use, you know, say three cups. It's a couple hundred milligrams of sodium we threw in here over the whole roast. So that should be enough to tenderize it. And we got our, so we got our rosemary, we got our curly parsley, our onions, our garlics, our potato, our deer meat, obviously seared that beef broth so really the only thing unnatural was the beef broth but we didn't have to add that we could have just added water and had a great roast and these are how easy these uh deer roasts are and if you didn't watch the first video of explaining them the easiest way to make a deer roast this should do it for you we're gonna just put this uh off to the side cook it four to six hours and i'll show you what the finished product looks like and you're gonna cook this on high. It's optional, but what I like to add is portobello mushrooms. Any mushrooms will do, but portobellas really bring the flavor out in these deer roasts. So if you have those, I wash them. I cut the stems up, cut the mushrooms up, and I don't need leave any of them whole, they're too big. And they add great flavoring to the roast. Like I said, the stems I really don't cut up too much. You can slice them. I always cut the ends of each stem off because they seem like they get like this hard bark on them. So we'll get those, throw them in the pot. A lot of people add, uh, these different spices with sugar, they add sugar to their roast to sweeten it up. We're not doing that today, but if I did want to add something sweet, add bell pepper. It's the same as adding sugar, and it's more natural and a little bit better for you. There's all kind of different fruits you could put in these too, but we're just doing a simple beefy deer steak, deer roast, you know. So here's the simple way to make the deer roast. Uh, don't have to add celery. It's optional, but we like it. It's good for you. These were just rinsed. Now they're nice and clean. We're gonna dice them up and get them in a crock pot. This, this is about the size you want. Some big chunks, some little chunks, whatever you prefer. We like the farm style roast, big chunks. That's why we didn't add sweet peppers really, just because uh, well maybe we get stuff much more in that pot. And here's how this deer roast turns out. It's just falling apart, just like that. And that's what you want, just like that. Mix her up a little bit, put her on plates, and show you what she looks We're like. Making, I figure make some nice sides with it. So we made our homegrown Swiss chard. We cut the stock up first in about one, one and a half inch chunks. Uh, a little bit of butter, a little olive oil and black pepper is all you really need. 
soften the stalk first and then we put our leaves in because what I found is if you put the leaves in with the stalks, what happens is it just turns to mush, so it's not really tasty. And then just some macaroni and cheese and that's a good meal. It's a simple meal and it's it's really good for you. So thanks for watching and please guys hit the subscribe and throw a comment down below. Swiss chart will look like once it's all cooked up and good. Looks great color, it looks beautiful.